everyone, welcome back to Build Tune Race. Tonight we're actually getting started on the turbo kit for Salty. This is what showed up for it. Some Garrett turbos. I'm excited to get these things open up. These are insane. They're gonna make a ton of power, more than we need, but there's two of them. So let's get these things open up and then we'll get moving on to fabbing up the turbo kit. All right, so I'm gonna start with opening up the first turbo that we have here. I told them I wanted to run enough to at least make 1800 wheel, probably close to 2000 crank, but with some room to grow. I didn't want to like push the turbos way too hard to be maxed out on anything. I wanted everything for the drag and drive stuff to be able to make the power fairly easy without pushing anything to the limit so then it can live. What Garrett helped me figure out and spec out was two turbos for the 427 inch engine, which ended up being, hold on, two GT45 1500s. So I'm gonna get the wrapper out this thing, we'll check it out. Let's see what we got here. Haha, <laughs> yes. That is a 76 millimeter G45 frame. So it's kind of like a mid frame. I mean, some people consider it a small frame. It's definitely not a pro mod. It's smaller than an S480 style board but it's bigger than like a small like 76, 75 precision. So it's kind of like a, I call it like a mid frame style. When you order them from Garrett, you get them more or less compressor side with the exhaust wheel, and then you get to choose your exhaust housing. So let's go ahead and open up one of those now. So here's one of the exhaust wheels. They're pretty heavy. This little box is just as heavy as pretty much that whole other box. It's just the exhaust side of it. And what we have here, we got some V bands. So that'll be good. Help with the fabrication side of things. Then what we have here is a V-band on both sides. So, you know, the V-band that kind of connects to the housing. And then also I went ahead and opted for the V-band on the inlet side, on the hot side from the turbo kit. So then this will make it easier for fabbing everything up. Come over here, connect it with the V-band. I don't have to mess with like a T4 flange and like adapting a round pipe to a square flange or any of that stuff. So this is gonna make a super, super nice turbo. It's all stainless. They're pretty thin, so this will save some room in the engine bay when building it as well and i believe that the exhaust off of this is a four inch i believe i think it's a three inch in and a four inch out we'll double check that here in a little bit so what i'm going to do is go ahead and assemble one together and we'll take a look at everything as one piece oh 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 <laughs> alex run away <laughs> actually aj and alex showed up tonight they're going to help me work on this thing kind of hold the turbos we'll kind of mock some stuff up figure where everything is at get the headers mounted and also we might hang the dash in here. We gotta start figuring out some of the stuff in the car as well. So just trying to work on a little bit of everything as we can. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble one of these now, get it all together. Gotta be really, really careful. I probably already messed up because I gotta get the V-band underneath it, but figure out which V-band I need. Just gonna go ahead and unassemble the V-band real quick. Screw that, drop that around here. Get it below the mating surface or near it, around it, by it. And now we'll go ahead and assemble it. Just drop that down, the V band up around the flange, screw it back together. All right, so to get this thing assembled, I'm gonna use this flange here. There's actually three that come in the package. This one's like a low profile, it's real thin. So hopefully, this is the one I believe we need to uh, go around the flange down here. Go ahead and pop that off. Set this on around here. I don't want it below, so I'm not fighting it getting it on. Line it up with the little outlet. Then you're not stretching the V-band too far. Go ahead and set that down on there. And then bring the V-band up around the flange, tighten it down. So we got that tightened up on there. Now we pretty much have a complete unit. So again, full rundown on the specs on this thing. It's a G45 1500 rated at like 1500 horsepower each. 76 millimeter turbine wheel, a 115 AR V-band housing on the backside with a 89 millimeter exducer in the turbine. Pretty much a 76 89. So, and then on the exhaust side it's an 82 millimeter wheel so pretty much a 76 82 with a 115 ar so like i said this thing is plenty capable there's a lot of cars going really really fast with two of these so salty with the 427 it's gonna be no problem making easily north of 1800 We'll have plenty on tap. We won't even touch really the full capability of this turbo. We'll have plenty. I'm super stoked to get these things hung in the car. So I'm going from 188 that used to be on this thing to 276s. So what do you do when you first get your turbo? You go set it in the engine bay to see how well it'll fit. Well, guys, slightly bigger than I was thinking. I was hoping it was gonna go right here. It should still be able to possibly fit. Uh, we're gonna hang the intercooler in here and see really how tight everything is. And then we'll get a better picture. Either way, we gotta make two of these fit in here. And that's where the fun part comes in with building the turbo kit. The radiator coming in, you're probably just back just a little, probably somewhere in about there. So then we gotta pretty much get down to like the inlets on the intercooler from the outlet on this bad unit. With some aluminum piping. And then we gotta figure out where and how is this gonna feed into that? But I mean, like if we we're here, that's pretty gosh dang close. Really, that's not that bad. 
So super little tiny piece right here, fit in between there, and we might be able to make that work. Kind of got to get one thing hung and work on the other thing, but this is why I didn't want to mount this yet, because if sliding that back just that much helps with lining up to the exit on here, that's okay. That side's gonna be a little different story because we're gonna actually have to come out of the turbo and down to it. That's what we're about to figure out. So then the next part of this is getting started on all of the hot side and the exhaust. I already have a header here on the car. That one worked great. These are actually the Flowtech headers from Holly. Uh, a lot of people run these on turbo builds. They work super well. One small issue, and that is with the driver's side header. To fit these on an F body, you would think, you know, they just pop right in there and go. That steering shaft right there, yep, it, it's the header. So I already had the header on this side. It looks good, everything, but that steering shaft will definitely not work. I actually did some recon before even touching this and found in some forums that people said on F bodies, on the Camaros, Trans Ams, they actually will hit that. You can extend the shear, steering shaft clear out to here and then try to turn it. I really don't like that idea. Uh, you can do all sorts of other kind of weird stuff. But what my plan is, and I haven't seen anybody quite do this, but I think I can make it work. It's right here where the little X is at. That's approximately where the shaft comes up and through this tube. Also shout out to anybody that drinks the Poverty Mountain Dew. You gotta be able to afford those car parts somehow. Is I think what I can do is cut here and somewhere up in here, take a 45 bend, attach it here, and then it'll actually move this tube out and it will go around the steering shaft in the car. So I'll have that tube going somewhere like right back here. One crappy part about that is if we go to remove the header out of the car, you have to either unhook the steering column, pull it into the car, not the worst, like five bolts, or unhook the rack and slide it out enough to be able to get the steering shaft here out of the car and out from the header and then you can remove it out. So a little bit of a pain, that little bit of a pain also, if I can make these headers work that way, saves me from buying like a 15 or $1,600 set of headers. I also heard that you could move the rear two tubes and kind of build it around it, but I'm gonna try it this way. I think I can make it work, modify the header as least as possible and still make the flow really, really good and make it work. Also, I'll need to eventually add EGTs to these headers. First step is get that header to fit or at least get that tube out of the way so I can bolt up both these. Then I can look at it. So hopefully maybe just a little tube here, here to the hot side, out of the turbos, into the intercooler. It's gonna be tight. We're gonna try to make it work. One more thing that I've been trying to figure out is what in the heck are we gonna do with this gigantic CID, you know, elbow and stuff like that. So I ordered some aluminum tubing to get started and I think this might work out really well. I got a 90, which should be out a little bit because of the, you know, throttle body. Then you take a 45 and go something like that. I think that's about kind of how that intake tube's gonna fit. I don't know where you think, Alex, you were at with the, something like that, right? Oh, we'll just grab it and look at it. We have the technology. That is sitting somewhere about, a little bit more yeah, out in there, that's where we were at. And then we end up going 90 out of the throttle body, 45 down. More or less, if that shortened up and kept going, I think it would land pretty dang close where it's at if we were able to cut this off. So that's a little bit more of an aggressive angle. So we might try to tilt the intercooler back to about somewhere about like that, shorten that up until that lands there. And then that could be pretty easy. I think that's gonna work out all right. Sounds good now. We'll see how that plays out in the future. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do that right now. The last pieces I got from Garrett was two of these bad units. This is their 50 millimeter wastegates. And these things are super nice, super clean. Give a little bit of color to the engine bay. But then thinking about it, if we don't have much turbo piping to hang a wastegate, it's gonna probably have to go somewhere like here maybe? Just turn down, intercooler. It's gonna be super, super tight to fit all this stuff in here, but I mean, if we can pull it off, it's gonna look super clean and super sick. Somewhere, if this turns, goes over the turbo, that goes right there. That might just line up just perfect because I am a huge freak when it comes to making sure that your wastegate is super well prioritized on the exhaust side because you do not want boost creep. 90% of people that end up with boost creep, they just don't put their wastegate in the right spot. It'd be like hanging it like this, terrible. It's not gonna get the flow of air into the wastegate and get it out of the engine. You actually want the exhaust to flow into the wastegate better than it is flowing into the turbo. So then this is the path of least resistance to get the air out. We'll talk about that more in the future. All right, so we couldn't leave anything alone. We uh, had to just keep visualizing and figure out what the heck we're doing here. So we actually put the whole front end back on Salty and I think we're about ready to go racing. Just kidding. I mean, that gives you a good visualization of that big old intake. What we're trying to figure out is where the heck are these turbos gonna fit once you add a wastegate and uh, all that. It gets super tight here and I mean, it may work, to have them little short stubby pipes, but like this side I don't think would work right there because you gotta be able to come down and go in in like a two inch area and if you take two, three inch pieces with bends, you gotta be six inches away type of a thing. We put the front end back on to see 
What we're looking at is can we fit the turbos down here under this light and then they'd sit lower in the car. Air would be able to come in, not really through the fog light because it's way outside the car, but it'd be somewhere in here, I guess, would be the turbo would be right behind it. But we were like, okay, is it gonna hit? What about the wheel? So we put this little deal on here. This is about where the wheel's gonna hit. Uh, we've been hanging the turbo in here and I'll show you guys kind of what we're thinking, but we're still not sure if it's gonna work. All right, so I'm gonna stick this kind of right. It makes it a lot more difficult when the, they're looking at it, but I was kind of thinking, Maybe somewhere in here. We gotta have that 90. <laughs> it would be real close to hitting. We might be able to shorten up the 90 to get the exhaust a little shorter and come right out the fender, but I mean, it's gonna be close. Again, guys, we're just trying to get a visualization of what may be possible. Either way, we're gonna make it work, but uh, we lost a whole lot of room really, really fast, even with the tube front end. After a whole lot of holding, talking, and looking at things, the headlight bracket on the stock headlight, there's a whole lot of dead space right here. And the most important space I need to be able to fit the turbo is somewhere right in here. Does this thing really need to be here or could we mount it off one mount? Or could we just, and I made a little mark right here. What if I cut this bracket, which kind of sucks cutting up the brand new tube front end, but I think it's gonna make sense for the build. So maybe come over and keep this last little triangle and then cut it and then bring a bracket off of here and come over and tie to this bolt. So then it's still held by this bolt and those two bolts over there on the original mount but then we gain all this room for Makes activities. sense to me. Yeah. I mean, if, if we don't have that, like you said, you're gonna have more of a problem for your turbo drain. So the higher we go, the better we yeah, are. Yeah, the higher I get the turbo, I'll put an exo pump. Hopefully it, it'll drain back. We gain a little bit more room for the pipe to come out and tie into the turbo. We're not way out into the fender where we're probably running into as much issues with the tire. We're still, that's still gonna be tight, but it opens up a couple more options for us to uh, play with. I think I'm gonna get out the cutoff wheel and just cut off the uh, headlight bracket and modify it slightly uh, so we can gain some room for these turbos. Uh, I was really planning on working on that tonight, not redoing some of this. Sometimes you just gotta make these calls and make things happen. Worst case scenario, like AJ was saying, we just glue it back together. Seconds of the cutoff wheel and now we have more room. So yeah, let's see, uh, let's see how that's gonna play out. Alrighty, so we cut that thing out of there and now I think it'll be somewhere probably right in about there. So I need to take this off, probably clock the turbo down, exhaust come in, this might raise up a little bit even now. Exhaust come down and in just a little bit. This rotate down, go down and into there. It's kind of the best of both worlds. We're not way out here. I got enough room to come out, turn, and try to get, it might be more than a 90 and then come back out the fender. Otherwise, I think that's the key. I think that's what we were looking for. Yeah, I just think that's what makes sense. So I think it'll look killer too, sitting like this. All you gotta do is take one step back to maybe make a couple steps forward. Alrighty guys, so I think we figured it out. Minus some headlight bracket, angling all the dangles together. I think if we take and cut and move this flange back just enough, put a 45 right here, the wastegate will just barely slide in, kind of be right in this general area. It's still gonna be tight, but I think we can make it. And then this obviously a 45 up, 45 in, something right there. And that's pretty gosh dang close to where it's gonna be. I kind of like the fact that the turbo is off to the side of the radiator. So fresh air, the kind of angles at the fresh air coming in off the bumper, around the radiator. You'll have a headlight here. You'll still see the turbos, not completely, like not real big. It's sitting up tall enough that the drain should gravity feedback. Thinking this little modification of the headlight bracket to put the turbos kind of originally where I envisioned is gonna be the game. If we pull this off, it's gonna be pretty slick. You'll still have less than about two and a half, three foot of tubing on each side for the hot and cold side, which is really badass. And then obviously what you got going into the intake. I think that's what we're gonna do to move forward, but now it's time to move on to the header. On to the header and there we go. Now we're missing a big old piece and let's see if this fits in the car now. All right guys, now you can see it fits really, really nice without a rear cylinder. Now I've just got two ideas kind of forming in here. My original one was trying to come out of that pipe there, kind of head back around the steering column like so, and then back up to the other pipe, as you guys can see. May work, may not work. That's the way I'd have to do it to remove the header if I did. Or I can try to come out of that pipe there, head straight up right before it, and then kind of head up and over the steering column and then tie back into the rear cylinder. I just have to rotate that up. So I'm not sold on either process, but we're gonna cut a little piece and see what we can make fit. Got a couple tacks around the outside here. Got this tacked on here. And uh, now we can set it back in the car. So I went ahead and tacked the V-band on here. You guys can see kind of like right there in the flux, kind of coats it on the inside. Alex is putting the header back on. We're gonna clamp this to the turbo, and then we will tack this to the header, and then we'll make sure everything's right where we want. I'm hoping, but I'm hoping my fingers don't get burnt right here.
That is some tacked welts. It is hanging on its own by the V-band. So this is really actually pretty stiff and rigid, but I did order some Maven mounts. These go to the bottom of the turbo. If you guys haven't seen these, these are super nice. All billet piece here. You can weld a tube into the end of them. They bolt to the bottom of the turbo with a little O-ring. Super nice little pieces. So that's kind of my idea is that this turbo mount, it'll sit somewhere in there like this up on the flange and then have a mount come off of this and then the drain off the bottom of this. That's what I need to be careful of too is because the distance from the flange to this bar and I still need to get a 90 out so the oil drain can head that direction. I think we're gonna be okay. I don't think the oil drain will hang lower than the turbo, so we should be all right. All right, guys, got the intercooler in there, added the vibrant clamp. Fortunately, that kind of gains us some room this way and it is super, super freaking tight. So we're gonna have to play with everything to pretty much touch the radiator, which obviously is not gonna work because it's in front of this, to rolling this around to this being clear back here to almost probably close to what, where the pulley would be. I don't know exactly what we're gonna do here. Headache started. I'm gonna start with a 45. All we can do is start cutting pieces, setting them in there and kind of seeing where we're at. Figuring if I used a 45 to make this work, I don't see why I couldn't make a 45 work that way. I also have some 90s, U, all that type of stuff, but this, it's three inch pipe, so it takes up a lot of room to get there. Just cut and start fitting it in there and seeing what we need. Cut too much, order more if we need, but we gotta have something to put in there to at least start getting a visual to see if it's even possible to reach where we're trying to get. All right guys, so big, big issue here is, well, we don't have enough room like I thought maybe might happen. There is a little bit of hope. If you guys can kind of visualize that, goes and lines up with that, that it would fall in there. The only thing is, is the Wiggins clamp is too thick. So that like inch and a half of space makes a massive difference once you have to come out of there and then back into it. So what I might end up doing is actually welding the pipe straight to the intercooler, kind of like this. There's no extra V-band to save room. Just bringing the pipe off the intercooler right there and up might get us what we need. But what Alex was just suggesting is why don't we work on the hot side on the driver's side? So we make sure we don't really put ourselves in a bind over there. And if that looks like we can complete it, and that's the only thing we gotta do is cut those flanges off and just weld the pipe directly to the intercooler, then maybe that's what we do. After about 17 million hours today, fighting that side and still not sure. I think I need a tighter radius bin. The guys and I decided we were gonna put the driver's side on. So we got this turbo hanging here and man, this one's gonna be quite a bit easier because this will just come up and in kind of like that does down but up. That is gonna make life way easier being able to plumb the low part there. Not uh, not 100% sure on that side how we're gonna make it work but this side I don't think we're gonna have much of an issue. Got back to work on it, got this tacked up. And now you guys can see that looks like it's probably gonna work out pretty decent. So as you guys can see, like using a piece just a little bit probably longer than this one. And this side should go together fairly easy if it can land there. Biggest thing is gonna be on that side getting figured out. And I don't really wanna build up this side yet until I know I can make that side work because that's the harder side. Kind of either way, if you move this one too much then this one gets to be a pain. If you can't fit that one, that one becomes a pain. Back and forth here, but trying to make two pieces meet one. The turbo kit is coming along. I'm actually digging the way it's coming together. It's just a lot of brain damage to get it there. Alex is working on getting the dash in the car so we can figure out how to get this poly dash mount in here. We're gonna end up putting that in here, but what we wanna do is we want the dash to stay in the car and be able to remove the whole dash work on wiring, but nothing changes. So the dash is just literally floating in the car. It doesn't have any actual use other than to fit rules that say must have stock dash. Sir? Sir? What? Hey, what you got going on, monkey bars? Oh, oh yes. where's that wrench underneath me? Do you think we're gonna clear those mounts in there for the ECU? Hopefully. Well, the glove box is closed, so. Ox said, forget that turbo kit. I'm gonna work on the inside of the car. Got everything tacked, welded, pretty much could pull this off. To try to, uh, yeah, that worked out great. <laughs> Fit the water pump on there and just so happened those hit and this hit, but we're changing that anyway. And now those don't exist, which we didn't need them anyway for the heater course. Don't need that where we're going. You're done. I'll do what you guys are doing. Oh, now we got it. As soon as we turn the camera. Wow. We had these guys over here playing tug of war with the freaking water <laughs> bubble a few minutes ago. <laughs> so we got the main thing out, I'll need to put an A in there, cap those off, A in that. And then we were talking about really for the car then, by modifying that, I need to make another one and have that as the backup pump that goes with us on like the drag and drive and stuff like that. But got it, snowed it. How's that doing? That is the thermostat. Ain't that fancy. That is bougie, but. Yeah, it's one way for them to charge you way extra is, you know, include the neck with it. And threw the water pump on after we got everything out of there, new dirty ding. Mount is on for the alternator. 
But the alternator hits tall valve cover, so I'm thinking I need a different alternator because the F-Body one has like this little cooling thing passage in it. Otherwise, guys, I think that's where we're gonna call it for this part of it, because at least we got the hot side done. We're working on some stuff there, but I need to get a few more parts coming, and this is where it gets tricky because you gotta order all the little things you need to complete little projects along the way. And kind of holding you up until you get stuff. So I got some stuff second day aired on their way. And we'll be back to work on this thing another day. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you would. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video.